Hi, I'm going to do a walk through in my bonsai garden and figure out what I need to do. It's mid to late spring. Um, a lot of the stuff I've let grow probably needs to be pruned. It's getting warm enough here. I'm in zone 9B, west central Florida, so I, I can actually start repotting some tropicals um, if they need it. Um, this is one of my blueberry plants that I pruned back in a video from a couple weeks back. Uh, it's got some new buds popping up. I notice on this other tree in the pot here that I've got a branch dying back. And I'm actually thinking of removing this lower branch. I kind of like the curve here anyway. Um, that's a bit straight down there. Since that's dying back, I might as well, whatever energy is going to that, give it to the rest of the tree. Because um, uh, I don't think we need that lower branch. So that's a, something to think about. Um, got some trees here. One of this will be in the, on display at the convention. I'm working on the accent plant and the stands. Um, let's see. I'm try to walk slow here, so it's not. I'm try not to shake much here. I don't have any special equipment um, yet. As I said before, once I get popular enough. I'll consider spending some money and having a nicer setup. I recently pruned this brush cherry way back and I'm starting to see some little buds pop all over. Usually that'll that'll really come back strong. I can do a follow-up later on that. That's the uh, native blueberry here that I collected a number of years ago. Doing good. I had pruned that back in a previous video. and It's, it's looking good. A lot of these, the red bud tree, I'm just letting grow. That's not all that vigorous this far south, so I'm just let that stay strong. But a lot of these, the crepe myrtle, you know, they're due to be cut back soon. Um, this horn beam, this large horn beam of mine, that I think I might have shown in a previous video, um, that I had restyled from an informal upright. Now into a slant style, uh, ca you know, semi cascade, cascade. Um, I'm gonna. I don't defoliate them often because they don't like it. But uh, once in a while, and it's very strong and vigorous now. I'm gonna need to defoliate it. Otherwise, the uh, it gets too crowded out, and I don't want any of the tertiary branching I have on the inside of the tree to to die back. This is the azalea that I did. I think. What was that, three months ago, or almost three months ago, where I hard pruned it back to hardly anything. Um, it's growing very strong and healthy. And what I'm waiting for before I do any pruning on this is that the base of these branches start to turn to slightly brown, slightly woody. Um, and then I'll prune that back. And when I do that, I'll, I'll probably make that into a video when I work on that. But that might be, you know, a couple more months, we'll see. I might even wait to the fall. But uh, I might not do it in the fall, because if I wait too long, I won't get to see all the flowers before I go to repot in the winter. Um, this is that larger ficus that I defoliated. You can see it's, it's healthy, budding back. You can do that now if you have some of your tropicals, especially your ficus. If you've got old leaves on it or they're way too large and it's healthy, you can defoliate. and. Get a healthier, smaller second crop of leaves. This large crepe myrtle, I want to prune back soon. This is always the first tree to wilt in my yard. Uh, it really sucks up water. Um, and as we get into the summer, I'll probably end up putting a tray underneath it to hold a little water. So it helps when I'm, if I'm away for the day that I don't, you know, if I don't get to it soon enough, I don't have to worry about it wilting. Or, you know, here and there. That's kind of my tree that I use to, if I see it slightly wilting, I know, you know, to check all my plants um, if they need to be watered. Right now I'm watering once a day, but sometimes that tree will need it a second time later in the day. My Florida red maples are doing good. So far they're not too crowded out, so I don't need to defoliate them again. I actually defoliated them earlier because they had gotten so full and dense I didn't want any to die back and I was looking to possibly put them in the in the convention. Uh, they weren't accepted for that this year but um, hopefully next year. Um, 
I've got some trees that I need to remove the wire, especially these ficus, because a lot of times the, it'll grow in pretty fast on them, and that wire's been on a while. So I'll need to go in, and what I do is I cut each section off. If I try to unwind it, there's a good chance you could break a branch or something and, and ruin your, uh, your style on your tree, and then you have to restart all over, redesigning it. Um, dwarf crepe myrtle, then I'll need some pruning. Let's see what I get over here. Another tree I'm working on to get ready for the convention. My uh, spruce pine group here is looking nice and healthy. I was a little concerned earlier in the year. Um, looked like it wasn't doing much, but then it finally started popping and growing. So that's good. My Brazilian rain tree is looking good. The bark's all exfoliating on it. I like it when it does that. And if you look, let's see if I can show you. I think I've got a butterfly soon to come off of it. One of my branches here has a chrysalis. I don't know if you can see that right there. And we get these large yellow uh, monarchs or butterflies through here. And I think that might be what that is because we always have tons of them. They love this cassia tree. It gets yellow flowers and it really attracts them. Let me show you my Confederate jasmine. Looking good right now with all its flowers and smells beautiful. Was a vine in my yard that I collected and turned it into a, a bonsai. Very beautiful. Not something you'd prune heavy back to get it super padded. You just kind of let it be graceful and let the flowers hang. Another azalea, I gotta prune that back soon. If you wait too late to prune, it can affect your flowers for the next year. Um, got my juniper literati forest here. It's starting to fill out finally at the tops. Um, that might be some of these junipers I'll be trying to get into the show probably next year. This tree here is a cephalotaxis. And I might even do a whole, when I let that grow a little bit and work on that, I'll make a video. Because for us down south, we can't do the regular taxis. It's too far south, they don't do well. But the cephalotaxis can be down to zone 10. Um, and it seems to do well here in 9B. Um, so if you want to, and it looks very much like a regular taxis. So, you know, if you like doing U's, um, it'd be a good material to get. I bought the original plant. It was a bushy little shrub from home to, from, oh no, it was uh, Lowe's that I got it from. You can see I need to do tons of weeding in this area, especially with this artillery fern that grows on everything. I would suggest something that I don't do, but I should, is when I repot and work on these trees to use preen and try to keep that to less weeds because I'm always weeding. Uh, you know, I remove all these weeds and a few weeks later I don't need it again. But this is the back side of a bald cypress forest I, I'm working on. Probably soon I'll turn it around and let the front get some sun. But so I've got a number of projects. This is doing good. I'm letting this grow to try to heal over. I got this large cut in the back. So I'm letting the top grow. But every now and then I'll prune a little bit to make sure I, when I eventually do prune it, I have a branch to prune to. Um, got a nice base on it um, let's see if I have anything else to think about what I need to do I need to go in I've got all these rooted cunnings of Sagaretia thesans which is Chinese sweet plum and I usually once a year I'll come in and I'll prune them way back again but they're a vigorous grower um, back here I have a dwarf azalea cutting I need to put it into its own pot Got my water jasmines, they need to be pruned back, growing leggy. Recently I pruned this willow leaf ficus grouping on a rock back and it's butted all over, so I need to get in there and pick what what I want to grow and what I want to remove. This trident maple um, exposed root style. Um, I put a, a thread graft through here and it's starting to grow. I'll let when I'm sure that took. Um, I plan on eventually air layering the top, but I might wait till next year for that. Let the tree grow strong till I have this set, 
and then I can cut it back and uh, regrow a tree there. For right now, it's a little too long and straight on this portion. I considered keeping it that style, but you know, it's like, yeah, you could have a tree that you kind of like, or you can really do what you need to do, take a little longer, and really make it a showpiece. So I'm kind of at that stage doing bonsai after all these years of liking the ability to show my trees, and kind of work on taking them to the next level. Here's that Fuquian T, the, uh, the phoenix graft I did where I've tied it to a, a dead trunk. And you can see, even with all that harsh treatment at the time, it's got new growth and it's looking healthy. So, you know, that'll take uh, a couple years of growing on that to uh, before it really looks like something. Um, and these are all my hackberry. I rooted some, bought seeds and rooted a bunch of, after they were like two-year-old saplings, I bunched them together. I don't know if you could see it, but I put a tie wrap around the base and make multiple groupings. I did that in some other trays too, so I have a lot of them to make uh, clump style hackberry bonsai. Um, so yeah, I've got lots of pruning, lots of weeding, and some removing wire that I need to do soon. Especially the wire, you gotta keep an eye on that stuff because uh, these trees get cycles where they really grow. And uh, if you're not paying attention, uh, it can bite in too far and you'll end up having to remove a branch. You don't want that to happen. All right. Um, also, I'm going to probably make another video soon, maybe even today. I recently made a, a, a children's picture book for a, kind of an introduction to the idea of bonsai called Pop Pop and Katie's Lonely Little Tree. Um, so I have that and my bonsai guide available on Amazon. But I'll make that for a separate video to let you guys know about that. All right, you guys have a good day.